Welcome, everyone. Hi, Namali. Hi, Lee. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Very well. I'm excited to be wearing yellow today. <laughs> yes, we uh, are talking about the yellow stage today. So um, we've been doing these videos on spiral dynamic stages, and we've done a video for each of the previous stages, move from beige to green, uh, or from archaic to postmodern. And today we are moving on to interval stages. So we'll talk a little bit more about what all of that means. But first of all, just to um, give credit where it's due, um, what we're talking about comes from the study of uh, things like integral theory from Ken Wilber, also many other um, developmental psychologists. Um, our own study of Don Beck's work, uh, Christopher Cohen, for, especially from the Spiral Dynamics book. Um, and of course, uh, looking into the work of Claire Graves, who is, after all, the architect of Spiral Dynamics. Actually, he never called it Spiral Dynamics, just to be clear. Uh, he just presented us, us with the stages that we are continuing to talk about. And also a really great website, if anybody's interested, is to look at the spiral, spiral dynamics integral.nl website um, to get um, more understanding about these stages. So at a very introductory level, we hope to talk about yellow today. It is a big topic and we'll see how much we can pack into our one hour or so that we have. Anything that you want to say? I thought that maybe we can talk a little bit about this entry from first year to second year. Uh, anything you want to just say right off the bat? Well, as we've been doing with the previous stages, um, I think it's useful to also uh, stipulate that in integral theory, the color is teal. So we have the yellow in spiral dynamics, but teal for um, integral theory. And indeed, as you alluded to, we'll be speaking about the leap from the first six stages, which are regarded as the first tier, to the second tier, uh, of which yellow or teal is the first stage. So good. Jumping in, I thought maybe we can start with um, talking about some of you know, what it means to enter this new thing, this new way of looking at the world. So the departure from green... Um, spells an entry into a very new way of looking at the world. Um, all of the previous stages from beige archaic, um, magical purple, red warrior, traditional blue, <clears throat> uh, rational orange, and pluralist or relativist green, postmodern, they were all in a category which um, I think Don Beck really is probably the person who, who first called it the first year. The words that Claire Graves used, um, again, the, this brilliant architect of this developmental model, was that he observed some members of society taking a momentous or quantum leap from the previous explanations of answering that question that he posed when he was doing his research around who do you think is a psychological or a mature psychological human being is. Um, so everybody from different stages of the spiral has given very different answers and, and, and there was a very big contrast or change or a leap, a momentous leap in the way that this next stage um, was describing who they thought a mature psychological human being was. So let's talk a little bit about these differences as we enter what we now call tier two. In tier one, um, all of the previous stages we talked about uh, in all the previous videos, the one parallel that binds them together is that all of the first year stages they see themselves as the one holder of the truth. So, um, and that's the truth that they see. They don't really see that, you know, others have different worldviews. Perhaps they're different and they don't see the worldview view of others, um, period, 
or if they do, they tend to actually judge that as wrong or inferior often what happens. So none of the first year stages fully understand the concept of con integral concepts that we've talked about, such as transcend and include. Each stage looks out into the world and doesn't fully grasp that there are others seeing, knowing uh, other perspectives, that people are doing life different to the way that you might choose to do. I guess the word that comes up for me is that the first year stages are monoperspectival. They only really see their way of seeing the world. Um, I think there's one exception around green. Green does see, so postmodernity does see that, and they even really value that other people have a different cultural set of beliefs or that other people live differently. And so they really do try to bring those differences together. But green tends to see that difference and then fall into what we call the pre-trans fallacy. The, that's when in integral theory, how we explain that is that it observes a, a certain stage, observes a characteristic from a previous stage. And green tends to then elevate, in, elevate it into something that is more holistic or spiritual than it actually is. Or they'll tap into or they'll feel into something different that is perhaps coming from a higher stage than green is um, inhabiting. And then they'll, because they don't have a language for that, often green will, for example, see yellow and sort of demote it to uh, orange. Um, they might see, see that as being too materialistic or mechanistic, all the sort of the ways that yellow might show up as being insensitive or too scientific. Primarily, tier one is monoperspectival and tier two comes along with all of its sort of some really noble gifts of being able to take multiple perspectives and also contradictory perspectives and hold them as equally valuable um, and make really valuable discernments about all of these simultaneously. So tier two suddenly sees that each stage in the spiral has a different set of values and they are each necessary and integral to our full human experience. They each have a truth to offer. They are a necessary piece of this big puzzle that life is. Um, and they also begin to see that there are healthy ways that the whole spiral is necessary and there are unhealthy expressions um, that we try to integrate through shadow work and such. At tier two, humans are far less driven by fear and what's lacking, which is emblematic of tier one. Uh, and instead, tier two is really beginning to see a world of possibility and natural order uh, of life. And tier one experiences world through lack what's missing. And tier two is said to begin this beautiful exploring uh, of exploration of abundance. They experience life as abundance. And that's not necessarily an abundance of material wealth or that you have everything you need in life. It's more an abundance that comes from one's examination of our interior and our subjective understanding of how the world actually works. So there's a relaxing. Um, it's like in uh, tier one is contracted, if you think kind of in, in somatic terms. And uh, in tier two, one really has a little bit more of a relaxation and an expansion. So both wide and deep. It's like as though somatically you can feel that tier one, um, this is just a sort of a metaphor, tier one is kind of holding the breath and tier two is releasing the breath. It's, it's, there's a beauty to kind of understanding these two tiers in that way. Perhaps just to embellish what you've already said, because it was a very nice introduction and it really gives a sense of the benefits of moving from first tier into second tier, because it does include indeed a relaxation, because if you associate with only one of the first tier levels and you take that perspective to be the only perspective, then indeed 
you have to hold on to something. And the moment that you create space for all of the first tier levels of development or value means to exist uh, together, so to coexist within your own awareness, it no longer becomes uh, necessary to hold on tightly to one of those first tier levels. So you can indeed relax and allow things to be where they are. And you and I were speaking about personality type systems. And one of the things that I enjoy about the personality type systems, for instance, like the MBTI or the Big Five or the DISC or the Enneagram, is that there are overviews of all the ways that we can be human, basically, all sorts of successful strategies of navigating life. And to see that people can be very different from ourselves, but, but be completely valuable in their own way and in very different ways. And to me, that's an analogy of the leap from first tier to second tier, where from the first tier perspectives, we align ourselves with only one personality type and believe that to be the better or best type. But as we make the leap from the first tier to the second tier levels of development, we appreciate the value of all types, including our own. And we're no longer personally committed to our own perspective. So the leap also involves from first tier to second tier, a transpersonal perspective where we're no longer exclusively identified with our own view of reality. And one of the examples that I know of that illustrates that um, quite nicely is Edgar Mitchell, who was uh, an American astronaut who went on the flight Apollo 14. He walked on the moon in 1971. And while he was in outer space looking at the earth, he had a spiritual awakening, as he described it himself, because he could see that all of the international strife and all of the petty human grievances they all dissipate when you look at the earth from outer space and you look at it as a single organism, basically, with the human race on it as a single species. Now there really is a deeper sense of complexity that that we're bringing into how we see the world. And, paradox, and also, paradoxically, it's also simpler in, in a certain sense. Um, so, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about this move that happens from green to second tier, how that actually happens. So although we'll mostly be using the word yellow in this video, Ken Wilber's integral philosophy would refer to the yellow stage as teal. This is an uh, departing from green. We're now coming back to an express self and a more individualistic way of being. So we're also now coming back from green to a warm color, yellow. What happens to green is that it starts to hit a bit of a wall, which is what happens at every stage. The, the arrival at whichever stage is the next stage for, um, for all of us happens when there is some kind of a fulfilling or satiation of the current stage, we feel like we've accomplished enough of it that in some ways we also begin to hit some kind of a, a, a crisis of meaning. It, nothing makes sense anymore from the way that I've been. So for green, that crisis in meaning making or sense making, I think probably happens in many different ways, but one way is that it that it begins to feel exhausted from trying to harmonize everything and everyone. And sort of going around in circles, trying to include everyone's voices. And, and um, sometimes some of these voices are kind of harsh and cruel. And why am I trying to include this? It makes no sense. So that need to harmonize, that sort of relate to everything becomes very difficult. It doesn't make any sense anymore. And then also, Postmodernity, one of its gifts turns into a struggle, which is that deconstruction. You do actually need to deconstruct everything you've known at a, up to a certain point. And then that deconstruction done more than you need to begins to lose meaning. There's no meaning in anything anymore. And that that way of believing that there are no hierarchies, that there's no meaning, that there's no good or bad, there's no a high or low, it just begins to be kind of ridiculous at a certain point. And green, late green begins to recognize and, and start acknowledging that. 
So it has to get real with the fact that although we want to see every culture as equal, for example, um, this belief begins to be challenged. Eventually, there is some, some amount of sort of shackles come off. It's in the same way that blue amber shackles you into a very rigid way of thinking and being in the world, green does the same thing in a way. This idea, the, the green ideology is quite rigid in a certain way. If you don't think about equality uh, in the same way that I do, something's probably wrong with you. And I think late green begins to realize the hypocrisy in this and it becomes less fearful and sort of wants to kick these shackles off their feet. And they begin to experience a little bit more curiosity. Perhaps there's something more than I understand. So that, ye that yellow teal is where one really enters with a little bit more curiosity, a little bit more open-mindedness. And you want to learn more and you want to move beyond the certainties that we had really gotten very comfortable with at, at tier one. Um, I don't want to just buy into these assumptions. Um, so I actually have this little bit that I would love to read from the uh, Spiral Dynamics book. As you enter Teal, viability must be restored to a dis disordered world endangered by the cumulative effects of the first six systems of the Earth's environment and populations. The purpose of living is to be independent within reason. Knowledgeable so much as possible and caring so much as realistic. I just love that maturity that is entering into um, interval as we're entering yellow. Yet I am my own person accountable to myself, an island in an um, archipelago of other people. Continuing to develop along a natural pathway is more highly valued than striving to have or do. I am concerned for the world's conditions because of the impact they have on me as part of this living system, seeing the world as a living system. So yeah, let me just stop at that. And perhaps we can move into how this um, this kind of the the this world is now moving from pre modernity to modernity to post modernity in green. We are now entering something that is actually post post modern, which is a bit of a mouthful to say. I guess some people have called it meta modern. Uh, in American politics, for example, there is a very clear segment that mostly defines as, uh, that mostly identifies as Democrats, but call themselves progressives. And progressives are a little bit further into the far left. And in the far left, you can definitely see the, the value and the unhealthy um, aspects of postmodernity. So uh, uh, Steve McIntosh, another great integral leader, actually started calling these integral stages post-progressive. It's beyond progressive. Uh, Don Beck and others have referred to this yellow value meme as systemic and uh, flex flow. Um, some you could also call yellow early integral. So where would you like to go from there, uh, Lee? Well, I, I liked what you said about the reduced need to hold on to certainty. So one of the people who exemplifies that for me, perhaps the most, is uh, Richard Feynman, who was um, a physicist who won the Nobel Prize for Physics in uh, 1965. He has a number of quotations which are really, for me, very descriptive of this yellow teal uh, level of development. And one of his quotations is, I would rather live in a world with questions that can't be answered than in a world with answers that can't be questioned. And another of his quotations is that nature has far more imagination than humanity does. And those are ways in which there's a, a reduction of the significance of human intellect and human perspectives in favor of a more nature and reality-centered uh, perspective. He was always 
very clear about the fact that reality is much stranger than we can fathom and that it's wise to be humble in the face of the complexity of reality and to admit what we don't know and to not be too certain about ide uh, ideologies. So, for instance, as you say, post-progressive, that's one way to describe these integral uh, second-tier stages. And another way is indeed post-ideological, where we're aware of ideologies and we can use them when appropriate or acknowledge them when necessary, uh, but we're not wedded to anyone in particular uh, as we are when we're at one of the lower stages of the first-tier uh, value memes. And the move from first tier to second tier also includes, in my opinion, the acknowledgement of all that we encompass as human beings. So acknowledging also that we have um, a shadow that we project into the world and that everything that is human is within us in potential so that all of the human behaviors that we can see throughout history and all of the experiences that people have had or the acts that people have uh, undertaken that we as individuals could also be in their uh, shoes, in, other, in uh, another person's shoes, and that we're also capable of expressing all that is human, both in the positive sense and also in the negative sense. So there's a recognition of being a fully human human being and being honest about our shortcomings and our talents. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I think, you know, at Yellow, we just become more comfortable with the nature of reality, in a way, just to put it really simply, we become more comfortable with paradoxes and polarities and uncertainties. Dogma has very little power over Yellow. Um, yellow is really good at... Um, you know, it's also being individualistic, as you, uh, uh, you know, with, with everything that you were just saying, there is more of a sense of agency now. So we can make up our own mind and express ourselves without the first year need uh, of expressing oneself with so much attention on me, me, me. So they can actually take yellow can take a sort of a, a 50,000 foot view and observe patterns and attending to both what I need and what others need. I can express myself without having to um, you know, abuse or exploit anyone else's, any other voices. Um, you begin to see the, the, when you step out that much, when you take that 50,000 foot view and you begin to observe patterns, um, you're really much better uh, at taking the bigger picture. And in that bigger picture, I am just a little blip on the screen and I'm okay with that. That's the um, sort of the beauty that, that yellow is really beginning to express. Actually, I just want to take a little bit of a pause here because we're using the word integral a lot in this yellow stage and we would in the turquoise stage as well. It occurs to me that it would be good to, to speak a little bit about what we mean by using the word integral. So sometimes when we say integral, especially in this integral community, um, integral is a stage of consciousness or evolution to which every stage has access. Sometimes integral is just another name that is, this is just given to a stage of consciousness. Sometimes people coming into this kind of learning about these theories, sometimes people will also say integral to the community that is the sort of the Ken Wilbur community. Sometimes people refer to integral theory because that's the name of the philosophy that Ken Wilber has taught. And so some people might say Ken uh, might say use the word integral and what they really mean is the integral community, the community of people that are coming to these learnings through teachings of uh, Ken Wilber and others. Uh, and just to also specify even a little bit more, here in Boulder, for example, we, Jeff Salzman and I, and you know, a couple others, we used to run what was called the Boulder Integral Center. 
And so at that time, uh, and then there was later also something called the Interval Center, sometimes in, in Colorado or in Boulder, there were lots of people who would say, oh, um, it's those integral people. And they didn't know anything about the level of consciousness about integral, um, nor neither did they know anything about Ken Wilber and his integral theory. They just simply said, oh, those integral people for people who were going into the integral center for, to attend different events and such. So I used to always have to like make sure, sometimes make sure what do people mean when they say integral this and that or these integral people or whatever. So I just wanted to real quickly say that as well. So yeah, so we're really entering a world in which um, um, this, early integral stages, they really do begin to see the world in systems. I guess I'm gonna move slowly into the dignities of yellow. Um, so let's move there. Um, it really sees the world in systems in that if there is a blue or a traditional system, yellow can interpret that and bring solutions to that system that are appropriate and respectful of that traditional system. It yellow, should not and actually does not uh, feel the need to make that blue system a yellow system. It's actually uh, giving this beautiful gift of being able to see systems and people for where they're at. They don't always practice that, but they do at least intellectually, yellow can see that. Yellow is flexible. We use these words systemic or flex flow. So it's, it's flexible. In that way, it can enter any of those systems and be friendly to that system, meet them where they're at. Even if yellow might not agree with certain other systems and their worldviews, it can still collaborate, it can be friendly to gain the results that that system needs and be respectful of that. Yellow flows with the natural order of the spiral. Everything is in a certain flow already. I don't need to mess with it. It's where it needs to be. So instead, instead of needing to fight with the spiral, yellow is really seeking to integrate it. It's the whole kind of the way the world word integral comes into being. And yellow loves to flow with learning and it loves to learn from various sources, like just one way of learning or one thing to learn isn't enough for yellow. Yellow has a strong ethical core um, from which it behaves, but it's not typically overly rigid um, or overly, and, there, and there's no need for yellow to be overly righteous about its own ethical um, standards. Um, and it's more self-directed rather than the church telling you how you should be or science telling you how it should be. You are really able to question all of that. So um, I guess the, the fact that yellow is individualistic can also mean that there's strength and, you know, there's a bit of a disaster to that as well. So we can talk about it later, but they do, Integral does seek out community, but they're also really comfortable on their own. So sometimes with yellow, there's a certain kind of an, on the, on the outside, a yellow can look like they're a little bit of a loner sometimes. So they'll go into community as and when they choose to, but they're happy to go back to their homes and do their own thing when the community piece is done. Again, that's probably because they got a little bit of carpet burn from the green community, which could turn into kind of that aperspectival madness often. So we'll come back to this piece about individualism in yellow when we talk about the disasters as well. But for now, I think there's a beauty to that agency that they practice. Um, they're both, you know, having gone through the first year, yellow is very comfortable with both domains of uh, green and orange, the best of green and orange in many ways. They're comfortable with um, the sort of the scientific rationality and practicality and pragmatism of orange, as well as sensitivity and um, the world of emotion and interiors that, that postmodernity gave us. 
I think another really beautiful thing about yellow is that it's able to understand context really well. The, the idea that everything depends on context, on the context of what's happening and what's going on. So it would seek solutions from various sources or various um, other stages even, depending on what's going on. For something that's going on, we really need a red solution and that's appropriate for this context. Or we need a orange solution and that's what is appropriate for this context. So, so that's a really wonderful thing. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Ken Wilber's integral philosophy, integral philosophy really is about taking all those multiple perspectives, which Yellow is beginning to get really good at, or it's really beginning to build those muscles of being able to take multiple perspectives. And something that really helps is, in fact, Ken Wilber's integral map, because speaking of context, it's no longer okay just to say, oh, that's just the interiors of a human being. And that's why this is happening this way. No, it's actually interiors. It's the behavioral components. It is the collective expressions. It's systemics. It's, you know, what line of intelligence are we talking about? What state are we in? What typology is playing a role here? What stage of development is one coming from? So it's adding this complexity to how we take perspectives. It's no longer enough just to, you know, take one perspective in a way. Speaking about the autonomy and the individuality of yellow, there's a Belgian consultant called Frédéric Laloux who wrote a book called uh, Reinventing Organizations. And the book is basically a study of organizations that try to operate from uh, in his words, a teal level, because he uses the integral stages, but from our perspective today, a, a yellow level of development. And there are a number of organizations that try to do this. And some of the things they do is, for instance, at the company Valve, which, for instance, uh, produced the Half-Life video games, is they work with desks on wheels, so they can wheel their desks around. And any time there's a project that they... Uh, feel enthusiasm for, some of the um, employees will wheel their um, desks together and work on that project. And once the project is completed, they'll wheel their desks uh, to different uh, uh, people and then start working on different projects. So that's another way in which we can see the flexibility of the yellow level of development in action. And there's also uh, Buurtzorg, which is actually a Dutch care organization which takes care of people who have difficulty taking care of themselves, for instance, elderly or sick people uh, or people with disabilities. And the organization is structured in a way that people are required to work quite autonomously. And they're actually trained over a period of, I think, about six months. They're trained in working as autonomously as possible. And they're also taught how to engage in effective conflict management behavior. So for, to be able to assert themselves in a way that is respectful for other people. So that's one of the ways that Yellow Teal sees that we can be autonomous, but we don't want to be autonomous in a way that hurts uh, others or devalues others. So we want to be autonomous and respectful of the autonomy of others which is, of course, a very um, um, noble way of approaching autonomy. So, so those are also some of the dignities of yellow, is being aware of the space of others, not being shy in inhabiting our own space, but being respectful of the space of others simultaneously. Yeah. And, and because of what you're saying, I think one of the other really beautiful gifts of integral or yellow is also that they are, yellow is actually capable of practicing a greater degree of compassion and forgiveness than the first year was able to. Because you're actually beginning to see where I stand in relation to others. And if I'm like this, wow, others, you know. So there is this real... Um, <coughs> gift of being able to hold multiple perspectives, 
really just means there is almost like a deeper way in which our hearts break at yellow for the ways in which the, uh, you know, each of the stage of the spiral um, is hurting in some ways, is needing help in certain ways. So our sense of ourself is separate from all of that, but we see it within the context of the whole spiral. And that's a, there's, there's humility in that. We're talking about the dignity still, so we'll, we'll get to how that gets a bit messy when we were talking about the, the messy side. But yeah, I mean, just real simply put, um, I guess in trouble, also one thing we forgot to mention in the beginning was we've often talked about with every other stage, how long this stage of development ha has existed. And integral is really quite relatively new. So I would say that once quantum mechanics formulates theories that state that perception influences the way reality presents itself to us, that we're in the terrain of yellow complex systems um, perspectives on reality. So then we would say indeed, perhaps at the most uh, 110 years ago, and a number of the quantum physicists whom also uh, Ken Wilber quotes in some of, some of his books, they actually sometimes do sound like mystics in the sense that both something and nothing is happening at the same time, or, or both A and B are happening at the same time. So for instance, the wave particle aspect of light. So there are many experiments that show that if you fire light particles at a, uh, at a detector, then you'll get a sort of a, a regular spread as if light behaves as particles. But if you put a sheet in between it with two slits, then you see an interference pattern, but that suggests that light behaves as a wave. So light is both a wave and a particle at the same time. And the way nature reveals itself through those light particles depends on the experimental setup. And that is very intriguing, to say the least, that reality presents itself based on the context of the measurement. That, that's one way in which we could interpret it. So that's why I would say that it, we can go back slightly in the, in the origin or emergence of yellow. Yeah, and certainly many uh, spiritual teachers, um, Aurobindo and Pierre de Chardin, and I think a lot of those people had many integral teachings for sure. Um, but I think integral communities, for example, coming together from, in a certain sense, especially sort of around Ken Wilber's integral theory, who is, I guess, in more recent times, the person to really popularize this. And in some ways, I would even go so far as to say that it's really a lot of people came into the study of spiral dynamics, which is what we're talking about, um, through Ken Wilber's work. And those communities, speaking of integral as in communities that call themselves self-identified as integral, sort of started coming together roughly around 30 years ago, um, but even more around 20 years ago, especially in this kind of the Colorado area. And a lot of people from around the world used to flock here because of that. So yeah, so, you know, just moving along, um, yellow is just really just a couple other kind of good values or good, the goodness of, of yellow. I'm just gonna read a couple of little notes that I took. It's practical, it's realistic, it's flexible, it's spontaneous. It's able to hold multiple perspectives and contradictory perspectives simultaneously. Um, and this is something directly a quote from the book, what others think you were you, like you, Lee, you were talking a little while ago about that sense of self, what others think is not critical, only interesting. You really do begin to appreciate the full spiral, although yellow, you may not still love the whole spiral, at the very least you see the whole spiral. Ideas are multidimensional, able to really practice far greater compassion and forgiveness because you no longer feel a need to demonize the demonize. This is beautiful, actually, that you don't have a need to demonize what happened before. You really can see it within the context of history. Um, 
So you can really, yellow can really try to solve problems in creative. There's a lot of creativity in yellow. You really try to solve problems in creative ways um, because you can interpret uh, context. You can see the whole spectrum of the spiral. Um, yellow from a spiritual context, yellow is able to come back to religions in a way. It has tremendous value for all religions. Um, what happened at green is that you start making statements like I'm spiritual but not religious because green tends to see religion as this old fashioned thing that in fact even hurt us at traditional, but green isn't really able to see that. So it tends to sort of throw the baby out with the bathwater um, of throwing out religion altogether and, and tapping more into a more inclusive spirituality. There's nothing wrong with that. That's actually good for green. But at yellow, yellow doesn't um, necessarily feel the need to deny something, which is what that statement spiritual but not religious does is that it is in some ways denying religion. And yellow can actually feel that, you know, I'm spiritual and I can also be in a religion and really appreciate um, the particularities of a single religion, for example, and to really embody that. So you return to religion um, through the context of spirituality and you, you come at it from a much more appreciative, more complex, higher perspective. Here's another really wonderful thing about yellow is that because yellow now knows that there is a whole world of beautiful, puzzling, kind of an entire spectrum of spiral that happened before yellow, Yellow is the first stage at which you also begin to see the concept of transcend and include, but also anticipate. This is something Don Beck says. So yellow is able to see that there's more that is emerging and I don't know anything about it. And what I know is just, like I said, it's a blip on the screen. There's so much more that I don't know and that is yet to emerge and is able to so relax into uncertainty and unknowing. This idea that I don't really know everything and that's okay. So I think yellow is the first stage that, that can really do that. Um, Yellow has very little need for things like status symbols and ranks and tenure. And um, there is a, a deeper need to just simply express oneself in how one kind of feels uniquely themselves. There isn't a lot of grandiosity. Um, again, we're talking about the values. Um, there's a preference for sort of systems and the elegant ways in which these systems tie together. Um, it's, it's, it's attracted to things that are more natural than things that feel kind of plastic and artificial. Uh, in some ways, that's a continuation of the green value for sort of natural things. I think that was a, quite a complete overview of the dignities of yellow. So moving into the disasters, as always, with each of the stages of development or value memes that we've been speaking about, the talents that each level brings are also, of course, when exaggerated, um, it's disasters. If you exaggerate the perspective from far away, so to speak, the broadest perspective possible, then what you tend to get is a perspective of evolutionary time. So if you then look at at the human race, for instance, then you could say, if the human race were to go extinct um, within a number of years, then evolutionarily, if we look at the entire universe, then there's probably another planet with life on it that will evolve and perhaps evolve beyond the level of uh, that humanity's reached today. And perhaps there are already other civilizations throughout the universe that are more advanced. So 
does it really matter that humanity um, is extinguished on planet Earth? So that's a way in which you can see how a very broad and distant perspective on life can also become a little heartless or a little um, detached from the daily reality and the daily suffering that is uh, associated with reality. So that's, I would say, one of the disasters is a level of coldness that can be perceived in the um, in the yellow or teal level of development. What would you add? I guess yellow really shows up in almost like orange, because remember we like every in the spiral, every other stage has something that resembles uh, one another in that way. So red and orange and interestingly yellow can resemble one another in certain ways because of that individualistic nature and they're less connected in some ways to the whole so yellow uh, can as you said detached is a really good word i think that that i agree with because yellow is actually very curious and because of that it's actually trying to map everything and categorize everything and you're trying to make sense of everything. And so that can look very heady and analytical and intellectual sometimes, which really does feel like it's a little detached from real human struggle and that you are not really very sensitive to that. Uh, certainly green recognizes that in this certain stage of people that seem like really good people that they, but they can seem a little harsh or seem a little cold. Another word that you use, which I think I really agree with. So there is that sense of not really getting together with others and coming together in, a, in, a, in the way that green did to, to accomplish certain things. Integralists can sort of show up for community and then they're content and happy to go back home and just kind of enter their own lives. And that's where really there is sometimes, I would also add the word complacency begins to show up because you understand so much about the depth of what's actually going on that you settle into that understanding and you even sort of become complacent. Well, that's what is supposed to happen in Afghanistan, or that's what's supposed to happen in um, this other system. And so there's a sort of a cold way in which we're not actually rolling up our sleeves and getting to work. It's such a kind of a common complaint, even within the integral community. Once we hang out here long enough, we begin to see that. It's like, I know a lot about the way the world works and I'm just going to let the world be as it is because, well, you can understand everything through the spiral. Another kind of an unfortunate uh, reality for Integral at Yellow and beyond is that if you think of someone at Amber Blue, for example, the shadow that they're carrying is really only coming from just about two or three stages prior to that. At yellow, if we're not careful and we're not doing our shadow work, we're actually carrying the baggage and the unhealthy aspects that we have disowned from six previous stages. So there's actually potential for more shadow at yellow than any of the other previous stages. So if yellow isn't doing their shadow, I think they can actually be doing more harm in certain ways because they haven't actually integrated th those yeah. disowned parts of ourselves from previous stages. That also points to something that we haven't yet discussed within the context of these calls, but each of these developmental stages offers new developments and these new developments can be used in particular ways and you can use them skillfully or you can also weaponize them to, um, mm -hmm. to forward your own 
egoic goals. And the same goes, of course, for um, integral insights and for um, personal development at any level of development. So one of the things people can, for instance, do with the integral model or with spiral dynamics is you can say, um, oh, that's so blue of you, uh, or that's so green of you. Or, and so you can use the model as a weapon to devalue the perspective of a person you're interacting with. And that's, I completely agree with you that if, if we insufficiently engage in uh, shadow work and awareness of all of the potential that we inhabit at these uh, higher stages of development, then it, it can become very messy and unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of shadow and the way in which we sometimes weaponize these kinds of teachings, um, and yellow seems to have its biggest gripe, in fact, with green, especially. Yellow can denigrate and kind of really mock green in certain ways because Green can be, we already talked about how green can be really cruel at times and very judgmental. And green is sort of canceling everybody. Well, in the same way that green cancels what they don't agree with, integral or yellow can start canceling green. And by doing that, it's a bit concerning because there is no path to yellow than through green. So if you don't get friendlier with green, with post-modernity, I think yellow is sort of cutting its own feet off in a way. You're blocking this giant part of society that is sort of knocking at the door of integral. Yellow can really um, put a damper on that and really block that entry because it is too arrogant and to, there's too much hubris in a way in, in yellow because it suddenly imagines I understand everything and these kind of these woke green is crazy and there. But I think one of the biggest shadow items for yellow to work with is becoming friendlier to green. And by that becoming friendlier to more collectivism, to joining with others to actually collaborate more. Um, and to watch out for the downside of being an island unto oneself. So, um, so that's yeah. another that, that sort of that real um, problem of the shadow, specifically with green. Yes, and you point to another very important theme that we've been discussing throughout these videos, and that is the agency and communion, or the um, individual and collective. Uh, pendulum swing. So indeed, with the pendulum swings indeed from beige, uh, infrared uh, being an individual or agentic level of development to the purple uh, magenta level of development being collective and more communion oriented. And then of course, to red uh, being more agentic to blue, amber being more communion to orange being more agentic, and then to green being more communion oriented. And we could say that at the yellow or teal level of development, which again is more agency and individual oriented, that for each of the stages, when the pendulum swings back and forth, there's an automatic repulsion against the previous um, orientation. So coming out of uh, a more communion-based orientation, there's a, a need to be more agentic and coming out of a more agentic oriented um, level of development, there's a need to be more communion oriented. And for me, that's also something that is very interesting in the fabric of reality itself. That is one of the polarities that shows up in um, human development, that we shift back and forth between those orientations. And that, as you say, becoming friendlier to the opposite orientation of the one that you're identified with mostly, that that is a very important um, practice that we all need to engage in to be more balanced as individual human beings, but also as a collective. 
by the way, I also just wanted to say yellow is still so young in a certain way, and it's not a, a, a highly established level of development in, in across the world. In some ways, I say this sort of lightly, when we use the word disaster, I might even say kind of it, it's, again, like I said, I'm saying this lightly, the disasters of yellow are hopefully and, and most likely not as disastrous as some of the disasters of the uh, earlier stages in certain way, because yellow hasn't been long, hasn't been around long enough to create as much damage as other stages have created in certain ways, because they're not aware of itself, of their stages. So that's why it's important to do things like shadow work and, and really talk about the messy part of integral and yellow, because yellow really is can be more aware of how we can be harmful if we're not self-aware, if we're not paying attention. So that's something for yellow to be uh, very diligent about. And here's another thing that happens often with yellow is that yellow does have a little bit of a cognitive advantage. It's, it is capable of holding all these multiple perspectives. Um, and so sometimes yellow can read a Ken Wilber book or, or study about spiral dynamics or something and then imagine that it is in the territory, but it's really still in the map. So the map is not the territory. The map is not the territory. Even yellow makes this mistake. It reads something or can understand something around these high values of integral, for example, and then we think that we must be that just because we were cognitively able to understand that. So let's maybe talk about how to integrate yellow into our practical day-to-day -day lives, Lee. Well, yes, and I would say we've already discussed or hinted at a number of those um, uh, practices and techniques. So self-awareness, of course, is very important. And we can cultivate that, of course, through meditation, but also through reflection exercises, contemplation exercises. And shadow work is also very important to both be the healthiest version of yellow that we can be, but also to acknowledge all of the potential that we indeed inhabit. And I would also say thinking in terms of both and instead of either or. So that's one for me, one of the defining characteristics of the second tier and, and higher is that instead of saying um, either your perspective or my perspective is the correct one, that we can say both your perspective and my perspective have partial validity to them. And then we, of course, we can find out which has the most validity within which context. So I would also add that another way of integrating the yellow uh, value meme or level of development is through theoretical uh, study. So for instance, through the study of integral theory, through the study of spiral dynamics, but also through the study of, for instance, what we were hinting about, uh, just the implications of quantum mechanics or of um, scientific discoveries in general that say something about the nature of reality. So I would say that scientific research and philosophies that deal with the nature of reality are also um, very useful to engage in so that we can create a map of reality that is as accurate as possible. And then, of course, have the realization that the map is not the territory, as you said, indeed. Okay. What would you add? Yeah, I would add um, to really study certain things like even, you know, Ken Wilber's work or study the spiral dynamics. These intellectual models are actually really, they're psychodynamic. So they actually act um, on our psyche in a way that that has us questioning everything and really challenging ourselves in, in that way. Um, thing, tools like polarity management 
the empowerment dynamic, which David Emerald teaches, the polarity management is taught by Barry Johnson. These are really valuable teachings. I would also say randomizing our lives or kind of bubble hopping, which is another concept that comes out. Um, uh, randomizing means pay attention to the bubbles that we are belonging to, and then to really enter other bubbles, to really enter consciously and intentionally other stages of the spiral instead of so different communities to really make sure that you're not stuck in just this integral bubble uh, and to go enter a blue bubble, enter a green bubble, enter an orange bubble to really even purple and red. It's even beyond just doing your shadow work carefully by yourself instead to actually go test yourself in other communities. So let's talk a, a, a little bit about how this individualistic nature of yellow begins to actually notice its detachedness. And that's when it actually opens up to the idea of turquoise, perhaps what is coming next. So there is a certain loss of meaning or communion that I think some parts of the yellow a constellation may begin to feel. So it's not even just that I'm missing a sense of community with other people, but with the entire cosmos, the, the K cosmos. So you feel frustrated in a, in a sense with, or yellow tends to feel frustrated with its tendency or capacity to sort of explain everything with its intellectual theories and models. So you begin to open up your mind and your heart um, to, okay, there must be another way of being here. I'm, I'm, there's a certain kind of a rigidity that has entered my own yellow world. Therefore, you know, all these categorizing and color codes and everything, it's this uh, exhaustion that comes into yellow that feels like I just need to just drop all of it and just rediscover what it means to be in community or to rediscover a more universal communion. So these are some of the ways in which even yellow begins to challenge itself. There is a movement from that heady intellect to a little bit more exploration of the heart. Yes, and I, I would also add that from an abundance perspective, once uh, you, you inhabit the yellow um, level of development or value, mean that you realize that you have the potential to do great things with the life that you have and that you can do only so much by yourself. So for instance, you can build a house by yourself, but if you want to build a cathedral or if you want to build a city, then you'll need to cooperate with others. And I would say that there's an abundance that presents itself through the yellow development uh, level of development and that basically wants to be expressed through the interaction of multiple people uh, from higher levels of development so you can create something that is greater than the sum of the parts yeah yeah beautiful okay so again yellow is very complex and we've tried to just sort of condense it as much as is possible into an hour and we'll see you again when we speak about turquoise thanks everyone for watching and thanks namali Take care, Lee.